Good morning, everybody. Monday morning, and we're in the book of Psalms. Aren't the Psalms such a cool book? For thousands of years, they've been a go-to book for people going through some issues, from the Reformers to the Puritans. And for me in my short Christian life, they've been a go-to book for me as well. Why is that? Why do people love going to the Psalms? The Psalms were inspired by God. He inspired them what to write, but they were real people going through some real issues, going through some stuff in their lives. And they are a reflection of what they were going through. In life, when we go through problems and when we come across issues, we go to people who have experience, don't we? So practically, when we went to digital church, I gave Ricky a ring who knew about computers, he knew about making videos. And by the way, on the record, Ricky, you're a legend. Um, and that's who you go to, somebody who's got experience. And spiritually, when we have spiritual problems and spiritual issues, we go to someone like the pastor or we go to someone who's spiritually mature or somebody who's wise and have walked the journey before us and can help us with those issues. And because the Psalms are written by real people going through some real issues, it's easy to relate to them. It's easy to take it in. We can gain strength, we can gain encouragement, and we can gain direction for our journeys in life when we go to the Psalms. I love the honesty in the Psalms as well. They're just really honest and straight, aren't they? I love straight talkers. We see people going through real joy and ecstasy. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. But we also go through people going through difficulties, going through crisis, going through real troubles as well. This morning, we're in Psalm 27 written by King David. And when we think of David, yes, he had all his success and yes, he had thousands of wives, but David went through some real struggles and some days of crisis as well. Saul tried to kill him. He had the battle with Goliath. He had wars with the Philistines. His son Absalom tried to take his throne. David went through some real days of crisis. We don't know which one this was, but this was a day of crisis that David wrote this psalm. It says, the wicked advance against me. He has enemies. An army is besieging him and war is breaking out against me. David was going through some stuff. And today in the world, we're going through some stuff, aren't we? We're going through this coronavirus, which is bring, bringing uncertainty. It's, it's bringing fear. It's bringing crisis across the globe. So what can we learn from David? How did he cope? How did he get through his days of trouble. Verse one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. On whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. David says, even though there's fear, even though there's trouble, David says, whom shall I fear? And then an army surrounding him and he says, my heart will not fear. And when war breaks out, he says, even then I will be confident. David had confidence, not in himself, not in his own ability, not in his money, not in his position. David had confidence in God. David had full confidence in God to deliver him and to see him through to the other side. And what a great lesson for us today. Today and in the future, when there's uncertain times, when there's crisis, when there's sickness, when there's bereavement, we can have confidence in God to see us through. Verse five says, in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe. In his dwelling, he will hide me under the shelter of his sacred tent. It's encouraging to know that we can have confidence, the same confidence that David have, we can have the same confidence in our relationship with God. When we put our full faith and our full trust in him, like David does, he will keep us safe. And what a great promise that he will hide us in his sacred tent, in his presence he will hide us. And God's word is full of promises, isn't it? That he will keep us and he'll protect us and he will deliver us. In the Second World War, 
when London was under the blitz and there was fear and trembling, a church put a sign out the front of the church and it says, if your knees are knocking, kneel on them. When there's fear, when there's crisis, let's go to prayer. Let's put our confidence in him. And let's find peace in his presence. In worship, in prayer and in reading his word, we can find peace with God. And as a follower of Jesus, isn't that a great, beautiful verse? In verse 4, it says this. One thing I will ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Isn't that a beautiful verse as I follow Jesus? To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And here we see David's heart, we see David's mind, we see his passion. We see an overriding story of all of David's life. David wants to dwell in God's presence. David wants to be close to God. He wants to serve him with all of his heart. He wants to put all his passion into fulfilling what God's called him to do. And that's what brought David to prayer in many times in his life, to seek God and to spend time in his presence, to find safety, to find guidance and to find relationship and love. David wanted to hang out with God. He wanted to live the full life that God had offered him. He wants to know him. He wants to honour him and to serve him. What does God say about David? David is a man after God's own heart. If you want to fulfil what God's called you to do, we need to have the same passion, the same desire, the same energy to say, yes, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord. This one thing do I seek. David's desire was to see the beauty of the Lord, to seek him. What about you and me for this week? Do we want to see that in our lives? Do we want to see and experience God's presence? God doesn't hide from us. He isn't a God that hides away. He says, come to me and find peace and find rest for your souls. We can experience the same confidence that David had when we take our eyes off the problem and we look to God and we keep our eyes fixed upon him, gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Today, this week, read the psalm, spend some time with God, put on your favourite Christian music, and just close your eyes and just spend some time in God's presence. He loves you unconditionally. He has an amazing plan. Let's have confidence in him. Bless you all today. Have a great day. See you all soon. God bless.